you see what you're missing, visit the Rhino Live page on Free FM, brought to you by the Spearmint Rhino. Or go to SpearmintRhino.com to see the ladies and the hottest Spearmint Rhino locations, including Van Nuys, Torrance, and City of Industry. See you at the Rhino. To Tom Likas in Space. Clango from the Crab Nebula. Hello. I love that. The Valley's FM Talk Station. 97.1 Free FM. Southern California's FM Jock Station. 97.1. KLSX, Los Angeles. Home of the Adam Carolla Show with Danny Bonaduce. Mornings. 97.1. Free FM. From Dallas, Texas, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Oh my God, your audience is something else, Tom. Huh? And now, and now, here he is. Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Thank you for being patient. I had to take a vacation, and I took it. Just got back. In fact, if you care, and I know many of you freaks do, um, I flew in yesterday from Paris and arrived about 5.30 p.m. And then I left L.A. this morning and came to Dallas to do my show. (laughs) So I was in Los Angeles for a total of 15 hours. And my body clock is completely screwed up because first I was on France time. So when I get in last night, I went to bed like almost immediately. And then I woke up at 4 a.m., which in France is 1 p.m. today. And I've been up since 4 a.m. L.A. time, 6 a.m. Dallas time, which may not be... uh, that may not be all that early for people who have a real job as opposed to what we do here, but uh, 6 a.m. pretty damn early. But I'm uh, wide awake because as I speak to you, it's about midnight in France. And, uh, of course, when I was on vacation at midnight, I was out and about, so I'm fine now. But at some point in the program, I just may crash. I just may decide I want to put my feet up. That's why our producer, Gary Zabransky, is here with me to make sure I stay awake and alert. And I do the entire program. Now, you may say to yourself, Tom Likas was in France for 10 days. What does he know about what's been going on? Well, you might be surprised. Because despite the fact that I was... uh, in luxurious hotel rooms in the south of France at Biarritz. And then uh, the last uh, three or four days I was in Paris at a hotel uh, literally steps from the Champs-Élysées. Despite all of that, is that funny? Despite all of that, I had my uh, sling box connected and I was able to watch television here. And uh, so I have been keeping up with the news. I I know what's been going on, and I am fascinated. Now, are we going to go with Jerry Lewis? I see we have the Jerry Lewis comment on the screen. All right, let's go with the Jerry Lewis comment. Now, um, I am, as a lover of bad television, and, and you know you heard me talk about the Magic Bullet infomercial, for example, and the guy who played Berman on the Magic Bullet infomercial called in. <laughs> Because it's the most attention he's ever gotten as an actor, I think. By the way, you can now see him. He's playing in Oklahoma, in Kansas City, by the way. 
But um, I love bad television. The worse the show is, the more I like it. And there are a few shows worse on TV than, than telethons. Now, in my 15 hours in Los Angeles, I noticed uh, billboards around town for the Chabad telethon. Have you ever seen the Chabad telethon? Now, I understand. My grandfather was a Jew. I am no anti-Semite. If you're Jewish, that's fantabulous. Okay, got no problem with that. I grew up in a neighborhood that was 99% Jewish. I'm an atheist, but I understand Jews. I grew up in New York City. We had a lot of them there, in case you haven't heard. A lot of Jews. Been around Jews my whole life. Got no problem with Jews. None. But the, and if you don't live in L.A. and you've never seen this, and I know probably many people in L.A. have never seen it, but the Chabad Telethon. I'm still not clear. Years after watching the Chabad Telethon, it's a four-hour telethon that appears on, now it's on Channel 9. It's bounced around different TV stations. The Chabad Telethon used to be hosted by the Borscht Belt comedian Jan Murray, who in the 60s was like a TV game show host, but he was also like a cat skills comedian. And uh, when I first arrived to live in Los Angeles permanently back in 1988, I believe the Chabad Telethon was on Channel 13 back then. And you would tune in, and there's Jan Murray in a yarmulke interviewing various Jews of about why people should send money in, but it was never clear in watching the show what the money would be used for. I, I was never clear on that. You know, at least on some of these telethons, they march the Crips out on stage, or they wheel them around in wheelchairs and stuff, and they kind of, like, tell you about the research they're doing. This telethon, it was never clear exactly what, what the purpose of setting the money in was. I mean, first of all, again, remember, my grandfather was Jewish, so I do not subscribe to any of these awful stereotypes about Jews. But many people out there get the idea, and I'm sure they're mistaken, but nonetheless, they get the idea that Jews, I want to say this delicately because I don't want to offend anybody, they get the feeling that Jews do well in business. I'm going to say that politely, Okay. And the idea that they would need to rent four hours of television time to ask people to send money in it was kind of comical, I think, to some people. But nonetheless, you tune in this telethon, and I was not clear. I mean, I don't understand if you had a telethon like to support Israel or to support education. I don't know. I, I would watch this telethon. I was never clear on what it was they were collecting money for. And one time about, I don't know, seven or eight years ago, I tuned in and literally I saw a rock group made up of four Orthodox Jews in full regalia. You know, with the with the hats and the pask, you know what the pask is, you know, they, they've got like those curls and full beards. And they're playing like, I don't want to say Leonard Skinner, but they were playing like rock music. And then it's like there's a phone number on the screen to send money in. It's one of the funniest telethons on television. I've like to this day I've watched this telethon many times, and I cannot tell you what the charity is. And there are billboards right now around LA. It may have already happened. I mean, I may have been in France when it appeared, but I can't imagine that it was on at the same time as as my all time favorite, the Jerry Lewis telethon. For many years on the radio, by the way, I did my own telethon. It was the telethon to eliminate Jerry Lewis in our lifetime. And despite the millions of dollars we collected over the years, uh, that disease still has not been cured. And apparently Jerry, in the middle of collecting money uh, for muscular dystrophy, it's muscular dystrophy, right? Haven't they cured that yet? They're not going to cure that until Jerry's in the ground. You know that's true. Jerry Lewis is going to be in the ground when they finally cure muscular dystrophy. That, because what other reason would Jerry Lewis have for being on television? Now, I was in France. I didn't see Gary, did you uh, happen to tune in? I did. Indeed. You did. So 
You can turn the mic on. Do you know how to turn the mic on? Wait, let me try this. No, try this one. No. Yeah, that, that's there the one. There we go. Okay. Oh, hours and hours of great, great, wonderful stuff. Does Jerry still have... Our, by the way, our, our, our buddy uh, Shotgun Tom Kelly was doing some local stuff for them. It's wonderful. How was that? Tom, Shotgun's the best, man. Was he on with Casey Kasem? No, he was on... Uh, Casey did some stuff that looked like it was canned, uh, but that hot uh, weather girl was on. What's oh, her name again? Jackie Johnson? Yeah, Jackie Johnson. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Jackie oh, Johnson. I almost I called in and gave because I... Because I saw her. Gave what? Well, you know, I was willing to negotiate, but <laughs> turns out I didn't pick up the phone. <laughs> I was stoned. But it was great. It was fantastic. It was very, very entertaining, especially the late late night stuff. They did a lot of stuff from Vegas this year. They did? Yeah. And that, does Jerry still have that elephantiasis? Wherever no, no, he no, no. Actually, he's recovered so the, from that. The bloat is gone the bloat, now? The bloat is actually gone. Last time gone. I saw Jerry look at the elephant bag, he was like, <laughs> Now he looks like he has cancer. Oh, well, that's an improvement. <laughs> yes, no, it actually is. Uh, you know. And so Jerry was on, and, and of Jerry's course, on. They, but, but the thing is, Jerry Lewis has got to be 76, 77 years old. I mean, he's getting up there. Yeah, and it's starting to show. It's starting to show. Yep. Was he sweating a lot? Uh, Yeah, he was dishe- definitely disheveled. Was his hair still jet black? Totally jet black. Like Pavarotti? Yeah. Pavarotti's going to be in his casket with jet black hair. <laughs> Which is going to be great. By the way, Dean J. D'Amelio, i got to tell you, Dean J. D'Amelio. The angel of death? The angel of death. The Grim Reaper. <laughs> the guinea of death? <laughs> the Gin Reaper, that's right. <laughs> he had Pavarotti on his list. He's got five. We, we, we give you ten opportunities in the Deadpool. He's got five already. It's sick. Whatever's happening, I, I can't comprehend it, but it's really... He got 29 wrong. points it's for Pavarotti. Wrong. It's wrong. In, in the history of our Deadpool, anyway, it's never happened this way. Of course. Do you really want to read Perez Hilton that much and know so much? <laughs> do you, does he really attribute it to his reading of Perez no, Hilton? I attribute oh, it to okay. that. Is Perez on the? Uh, he's on the Deadpool watch. Is that the deal? I mean, how does he? I mean, I, I, I know this Castro thing, but is the, has he By said way, that other people are going to die? Didn't Perez Hilton say Castro was uh, dead? Yes, he did, yes. And he, by the way, he sticks by that story. I've heard him. Now Perez yeah, But he Hilton, said he was dead already. I, I don't understand this at all, but now he Perez He sticks Hilton, by the story. I think he's got his own show now, or it's coming up. Right. I saw him on Kimmel last night. This guy's like a legitimate celebrity now. I don't understand that at all. But Why? I, I, that's what I'm saying. I don't get it. If you don't believe TV's one big vagina, the fact that Perez Hilton is a celebrity... Yeah. Not that he's ever seen a vagina, but uh, it tells you everything you need to know. He's on that, uh, what's that Fox show, the Fox morning show? It's like a midday show out of New York. What is, what's that called? Mike, oh, and, Mike and somebody. One of those cute and perky yeah. midday shows that's going to get its ass kicked by uh, Regis and it looks like whatever Ben is on with Regis yeah. these years, these couple of years. It looks like it's done in, in Oklahoma, but it's actually done in Manhattan. It's that hokey. Right. I mean, it's, Mike, oh, and, Mike Juliet. and Juliet. Dean apparently knows that. Yes, because he reads Perez Hilton. That's why he knows that. <laughs> but like n- now, people like Perez Hilton are on that show, and 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 they do their like latest Lindsay Lohan, you know, update and Paris Hilton and all that crap. Oh, Jesus, I mean, is there any television for straight men anymore? No. This is like <laughs> Jackie Johnson's weather forecast. Jackie Johnson on Channel Nine. That's right. By the way, and we've talked about this internally, but I'm going to tell you, last we looked at the KCAL 9 website, you can get a look at some of Jackie's. We met Jackie oh, huge, not long ago. It's a huge archive. Yeah, an archive, a video archive. They've, there's podcasts, I guess, of Jackie's previous weather forecasts. I don't know if that's so you can check her accuracy or you can t- check what she was wearing on a given day. Well, they actually, Jackie Johnson's the woman who does the weather on Channel 9, and, I mean, she's a wonderful person. We met her. She's spectacular, but she's got a body that is so outrageous. I mean, in its hourglassness, it is so amazing. In person, she doesn't look as exaggerated like that, like she does on, on TV. No, it, it comes off a little differently on now, TV. This is, you know, all these fat women who say they've got curves, Jackie Johnson has curves, okay? 
when when they talk about a curvy woman, this is what they were talking about, ladies. In case you're wondering, a curvy woman means you've got a large chest, a tiny waist, and then hips that are comp that that complement your chest. Okay, that's a curve. A curvy woman is not a woman shaped like a basketball. A curvy woman is a woman who's got wonderful breasts and an incredible butt and then a tiny waist. That's a curvy woman. So stop putting those ads on Craigslist saying you're curvy. You're not. Because if you're curvy like Jackie Johnson, you would not be putting ads on Craigslist. There'd be some guy who'd be dating you today. Perfectly proportioned. Perfect. But if you want to see Jackie's old uh, weather forecasts, just to keep an eye on what she's been wearing the last year or two, it's all there on the KCAL 9 uh, <laughs> website. You can, I mean, who wants to see a weather forecast from last March 17th? you got to wonder why that's up there. What kind of freak is logging on to the KCAL 9 website to check out Jackie Johnson's forecast for November 27th of last year? But it's there if you want to see it. Amazing. So there, there she was. By the way, looking fantastic. Um, I'm sure she for was the local, for the local LA stuff for the uh, for the telethon, and uh, and, and on the great uh, shotgun Tom Kelly. And uh, you know they're over the shoulders of the people that are volunteering to answer the phones yes. and talking about all the money that people have given and stuff. But then you know Jerry, I, I guess at some point appeared on. I guess it was Saturday, Sunday night. I don't, I don't, I don't know when this exactly happened, but they uh, get kind of punchy on those telethons. Well, what happens is that Jerry goes backstage apparently, and he sleeps and stuff. I mean, he, you know, he, he's not. Uh, well, one day he's going to sleep, but he's never coming back. <laughs> well, that's, that's coming that's soon. That's going to happen soon. But you know, he doesn't. He doesn't stick it out for the full forty-eight hours or whatever it is. He, he passes it along to somebody else. So at one of these junctures, apparently Jerry. Try to crack a joke, which yes. he hasn't done since you know. Was Jerry, effectively, well, now since what was he Jerry was with doing? Dean Martin. Do we know? Do, Jerry, and by the way, even then, Jerry was never right. a joke cracker. That's true. He was a he, the guy. Never had any jokes. Well, you were in France for a, a week and a half. Oh you yeah. Should, you, I wonder how this would have played in France. Was there any explanation for this? I wonder how this would have played in I France. They, they, they dig Jerry. Over I have there. no idea. But I, I, I did, now, did you see this happen? No, I didn't. Do we know the context of this? I I don't know if he was thanking people for sending money in, or he. The clip I saw just seemed so bizarre. It seemed like he may have been, you know, sleep deprived or something. And it was he he was playing with the cameraman and then tried to crack a joke about it. This and by the way, he's got a lot of people upset. I bet Perez Hilton's upset about this. Here's here's Jerry Lewis on this weekend. I'm not making this up. This is Jerry Lewis. On this weekend's Labor Day Muscular Dystrophy Telethon. Oh, your family has come to see you. You remember Bart, your oldest son? Jesse, the illiterate fat. No. There we go. That's a telethon. Illiterate fag seems reasonable to me. Well, you know, if he called somebody a fag, that would be bad enough. Fact that can't read, but then he calls him an illiterate fact. That's worse. I mean, it's one thing to call somebody a fact. That's bad and wrong, and people should not do that. But when you call somebody an illiterate fact, that's from both ends. <laughs> no, I think it's only from one. Oh, that's right. You're right about that. Yeah. I, I know that people are very, very angry about this. I, I know that people are complaining. I mean, put it this way. You know, I mean, what is he, 76, 77 years old? Um, I guess when you get to be that age, you just start saying stuff like that. But people are upset. Now, you wonder how upset they are. I mean, did it affect how much money they collected? Do we know if they collected the usual amount of money? Well, here's what the deal is. Glad is... Uh... I think what Glad did is they asked for an apology, but they made it clear that they didn't want it to affect um, what people were donating. But they, they f- but they felt that um, that the use of the language was um, entirely inappropriate and um, that uh, it was it inappropriate. Deemed, it deemed an apology. It was wrong. Yeah. Terrible. That illiterate part was just awful. Absolutely. I mean, imagine a fag that can't read. 
imagine telling somebody right. that they're a fag who can't read. And that's what Jerry Lewis was doing. It's wrong. Terrible insult. It is. I'm offended. I, I do wonder how the French would feel about this. So you didn't get any vibe over there, huh? I don't think the Jerry Lewis telethon is seen in France. But, but That's why they still think so but, highly of Jerry Lewis in France. <laughs> they haven't had to see Jerry toss it to Casey Kasem. When they see Jerry Lewis, they still think 1956. <laughs> They're not thinking about this. Good point. Unbelievable. So, um... Now, I have to wonder, you know, I understand, and I do, I mean, understand, uh, all kidding aside, I'm no homophobe. I have not only gay friends, I live in essentially a gay neighborhood. I've, I've, I've been around gay people my whole life. Uh, that word is a, a real hot button, and I understand why it is. I really do. But what I wonder when I hear Glad making a statement about it, Glad is the gay and lesbian Alliance Against Discrimination. Glad, G-L-A-A-D. But I wonder how many of the people who think telethons are entertaining would be offended by that comment. I mean, let's be honest. Who contributes to telethons? They're the slimiest, snarkiest, tackiest form of entertainment known to mankind. Let me interject here for a second and say that when you're stoned, they're fantastic, except yes. except when you get to that inevitable tear-jerking piece, and that is just a bad trip no, that's, altogether. No, that's no buzzkill for me. That's the best it ever gets. <laughs> that kills, that kills it for me? me. No, I can't what do it. What you <laughs> hell? I love that stuff. I go crazy for that stuff. Yeah, that's the difference Amid, between me and you. I can't do that. When we get to the Crips and they're being interviewed about how they how it feels to be Crips, I'm in. That is some of the best material there is. Okay. We need all the help we can get. That, oh, that's, are you kidding me? Pass me another brownie. I'm in. That's good stuff. But uh, Jerry Lewis making that comment. I mean, you got to wonder, like, there are people, here's the thing. There are people who take this stuff seriously. There are people who take telethons seriously. Like, they really are upset about the condition of the people and they want to help. Now, when I was a kid, and, and maybe you remember this, Gary, when I was a kid, there was a guy named Dennis James who used to do the cerebral palsy telethon, which I think might still be on in some form somewhere. That was the original telethon. And it was on Channel 9 in New York. It was on for years and years. Dennis James was the host. And Dennis James in the 50s had been the uh, MC of wrestling on the Dumont Network. And by, by the time I was a kid, this guy was like 70 years old and was hosting the telethon uh, for cerebral palsy. And they used to have a, um, like a caravan. I swear, Gary, I'm not making this up. They had a caravan of kids in wheelchairs. And every few hours, they would like have this, this song they would sing, like a march. And the song was, the lyrics went, look at us, we're walking. <laughs> Look at us, we're talking. We who've never walked and talked before. Now that's comedy. <laughs> you enjoy that. Well, you know, I mean, it's a parade of people being wheeled around in wheelchairs on the stage with with this woman named Jane Pickens, who was one of these... Uh, like celebrity socialites in New York, like in the 60s. One of these people went to debutante balls and stuff, and there she was. This was her big charitable event of the year. There, She would come out there, and she would sing like, like our friend Cat. She would sing like our friend Cat. Like that kind uh, of... Operatic. Kind, yes. But but Cat is operatic. Yes. This was like kind of that socialite faux operatic, like... <laughs> 
not actually operatic. It was like if you took somebody who never ever met somebody who had less than ten billion dollars, and this is the one day a year they're standing there with the kids in wheelchairs. Look at us, we're walking. Look at us, we're talking. <laughs> this was like high comedy for me when I was a child. I'm sorry. Uh, not the children being uh, disabled. That that was not the comedy. The comedy was seeing rich people pretending they gave a crap about this stuff and get out there singing these tasteless songs about crippled children. It, it, it was pretty outrageous. And ever since growing up watching that, I, I can't stop watching telethons when they're on because they are absolutely the most offensive programming on television. I mean, people say the, the dirty language and stuff is offensive. This is the, like the most offensive stuff on TV. It's is that true? Dean beat up a kid with cerebral palsy? That's correct. That's true? Yes. This happened, uh, I believe, in his high school years. And he claims <laughs> that the kid was... Um, There's something to brag about, was, Dean. Good work. <laughs> Claims the kid was a badass of some sort, that he had this incredible upper body strength, but was basically a fish below his waist. And the, the kid, the, the kid used this unusual strength to, um, I guess, you know, uh, pick fights and stuff. And, really? And Dean uh, felt that it was justified to uh, beat him down. And that. And yeah, Dean says he had a big mouth. And um, now the the guy actually gives seminars. He travels the country giving seminars about uh, bullies. He does. Yes, due to Dean's actions. Wow. So okay. I, I I have no idea how Dean feels about watching um, <laughs> the Jerry Lewis telethon. I probably. <laughs> Gets him angry, yeah. just like everything else. And by the way, breaks out the baseball. Uh, well, I, first of all, I wonder how many. Uh, again, I understand if you're gay, you'd be offended by Jerry Lewis. Play that comment again for people who didn't hear it. Oh, your family has come to see you. You remember Bart, your oldest son, Jesse, the illiterate fag. No, no, no. Yes. <laughs> I knew so that's the comment Jerry Lewis made, and it's it's causing a bit of a stir. And, and but I wonder how many people who take telethon seriously, the people who call in pledges for these things. I wonder how many of them will be offended by that, or whether it would make any difference, or whether people just think it's funny. I know Glad doesn't think it's funny, and I understand why they don't. But you got to wonder. By the way, and now this is what I was going to tell you the. Muscular Dystrophy Telethon in Chicago. You gotta watch that sometime because the Muscular Dystrophy event in Chicago, the local uh, cutaways where they do like the local host with the uh, local uh, uh, like talent, is outrageous. It's outrageous because um, in Chicago they've got like these uh, Polish people coming on and doing polka. And they've got, uh, like, local Italian-Americans coming on and singing opera at 3 in the morning. And they're not, like, opera singers or professionals. They're, like, people they, who volunteered to come on and perform on TV. I mean, that that's even more entertaining. It's even more outrageous. So has anybody heard about this? Anybody heard Jerry Lewis make this comment? Has anybody heard some of the uh, controversy over this? Are you offended by it? Would it would it make you think twice about contributing money to Jerry Lewis's telethon? And by the way, I have never contributed money, just so you know, to the muscular dystrophy telethon because I am convinced that despite the fact that muscular dystrophy is a real disease, I am convinced that the purpose of the muscular dystrophy telethon is to keep giving Jerry Lewis an opportunity to be on TV at least once a year. That's how I feel about it. But I wonder how you feel about this comment. Uh, why don't you call me and tell me about that right now? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I've been listening to you, and that is the best advice. Keep her out of the house. Oh, my God. She tried to. She's like, oh, I, I need a place to stay for, for just a week. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Go stay no. with one of your gay friends. No, no. That's right. That's right. Stay with one of your gay friends is a good answer. I like that. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Dallas, Big D, DFW, the Metroplex, 
studios of Live 105.3. Like one of our favorite goddamn places in the whole country to be. It's the Tom Likas Show. Thank you so much for tuning in. By the way, I mean, really, the only place that gives L.A. a run for its money, along with Miami, in terms of women, I mean, the, the hottest chicks. Just the hottest chicks. Outrageous. All right, uh, Jerry Lewis made the following comment on the muscular dystrophy telethon over the Labor Day weekend. Here it is. Oh, your family has come to see you. You remember Bart, your oldest son? Jesse, the illiterate fag. No. Let's say hello to Gil on the Tom Likas show. Hello. For taking my call. Uh, if you'll excuse <laughs> okay. me, I think that Glad and you and everybody else is, has a, a false read on what Jerry really said. What did he really say? He said, I don't think he really said fag at all. The way he cuts himself off at the end of the word, I think he was about to say fat kid. <laughs> you think he was about to say fat kid. Let's listen to that yeah. again and see if you think he was going to say fat kid. Oh, your family has come to see you. You remember Bart, your oldest son? Jesse, the illiterate fag. No. Fag. He, he, he put a g on it at the end. Well, I think that was him choking off his comment so that he could oh. say. You know, that, that's just my take on it. I don't think even he. You choose to his, believe he wasn't saying fag. I do choose to believe that. Not Are because you, I love. I don't love Jerry Lewis. I know his brain and his liver are half gone from his 20-year Percodan addiction. But, uh, I, look, I don't really care about him one way or the other. I just think it's a false read. I think he well, was wait, wait, wait. Is it that you know, that's two different things you're saying. Is that you don't care about him or that he wasn't saying fag? Okay, excuse me. I don't, I'm not a Jerry Lewis lover or hater. I just think that it's a misread. I don't think he said fag. Can I uh, interject here for a second? He's uh, he's actually admitted to the fact that it was indeed fag. He, 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 he apologized <laughs> for the slur. <laughs> you guys are right, and I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You just uh, wanted to believe. Uh, you just wanted to believe he never said fag. Oh, I have such a By the way, he should have love for Jerry. He should have done exactly what you just said. I think it would have been brilliant. Any, I told you his brains have He should have he should have just said I was going to say fat and I cut myself off. Right. If he had half a brain he'd say that. I would. It's all the Percodan. <laughs> it's all the Percodan, that's right. Yeah. Percocet, whatever it is. Percocet, Percodan. Well you know, thirty years ago, Jerry act. I hate to have to admit this to you, but he did have some pretty good classes at USC when he was directing. But he lost it. <laughs> I'm not trying to defend him at this point in the game, but earlier in his career, I saw him in some dramatic roles where he was very good. I think that was Jackie Gleason you were seeing. <laughs> no, it was, it was Jerry Lewis. He, he, Just he, he, played, he played the head of a garment industry. Don't say uh, head. <laughs> He played the president of, of a uh, clothing manufacturer on one of the shows like Law sounds, and Order or something sounds, like that. He was very sounds gay to me. <laughs> clothing well, manufacturer? So you're, you're say, you're say, wait, you say you played a part of somebody in the fashion industry. Okay. <laughs> well, maybe that ties into the fag remark even better. Maybe it does. I right, thank you, Gil. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5-800-TOM. Is our telephone number? Let's say hello here to Nancy. Don't say Nancy. On the Tom Likas show, hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm good. Okay. Um, my comment is that um, I think that he misspoke. I just basically think that he. You think he misspoke? Said, yeah. Like I so what? What do you think like... he intended? Wait, wait. What do you think after the word illiterate? What do you think he intended to say? Well, maybe he was trying to say fat, or maybe he was trying to say... Well, he already, apolog he already said he said fag. He apologized for it. I mean, why would he apologize for it if he didn't say it? Yeah, that's true, too. But also, you know, the way that he, he, he reacted after a comment, I think he just was embarrassed. Like, you know, he wanted to, like, oh, my God, you know, 
I should take it. I should take it back. You know. But he hasn't denied saying it. He hasn't. You know. He he, he said he said it. Actually, what he said was that um, uh, it's uh, he apologized to anyone who was offended. Everyone who knows me understands that I hold no prejudices in this regard. In the family atmosphere of the telethon, I forgot that not everyone knows me that well. So essentially, he wasn't really apologizing right. for saying so it. He, just in the he context, he only calls people fags in, in a, like family reunions. Yeah, is that, that's he's at, his his I mean, great grandson is getting bar mitzvah. He calls people's fags there, but he would never do it on television. Yeah, I, that, well, I think the I, explanation I think is I worse than what happened. Too, you know, by the by the. What he the last time I called know. somebody a fag, I was at my nephew's bar mitzvah. That's true. They know I mean, me there. They know me there. You don't. I mean, it's just among like, friends. Until I found out my nephew was a fag, and then I was really worried about it because I, I really offended him. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's true. <laughs> you don't tell. And, You're agreeing with me too easily think, here. Excuse me. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. I mean, there's certain things that you don't say in, pu- in public. You know, there's jokes that I tell only in front of my family, and I would never dare to say them in public. For example. Yeah. No, 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 no. Uh-uh. No, I mean, there's a lot of, even I tell friends, look, whatever I say, even if it sounds racist or even if it sounds this, it's only a joke. So you're a racist, but only among your family members, and then no, the rest really. of the time I mean, you're, I just, I, you're I politically correct. And no, 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 no. I think well, you're anonymous. Give us an example of something you would say at a family function that you would not say in public. Um, no, no, I don't give those type of, I mean, I, I would probably just say it in that way, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it in public, or I wouldn't say it in the. Is it about a particular? Is it? Well, put it this way: Is it about a particular race that you would say something, or is no, it about? No, I even make fun of my own race. It's just to me, it's it, you know. What, it, what it, race it's are you? Game. But I, I don't. I wouldn't say it. You know, if you're a comedian, I wouldn't say something racist in a public atmosphere because you know. People are sensitive, sensitive about it. And it so you should normal. limit those things to confirmations, quinceañeras, uh, but you should never, <laughs> bar mitzvahs, but you should never actually. No, not say, even there. I wouldn't say those things, not even there. I mean, right. I usually just do it among people that I really, really know. What kind oh, of so people. you would only call people fa- fags around people you really, really care about. <laughs> Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. I'd ask you how you're doing, but i got to be honest with you. A guy that gets paid what you do to tell the truth, to tell it how it is, and to find rats, you got to be doing great. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show from Dallas. At one eight hundred five eight hundred, Thomas, go to Trevor on the Tom Likas show. Hello, hello, Tom. Hello, Trevor. How's it going, buddy? Great. Well, I just think that Jerry Lewis, while being a horrible comedian, just made a mistake. He's an old guy. He said something he knew he shouldn't have said it. Right after he says it, he tries to hold his tongue. And uh, I think we pay way too much attention to the mistakes people make on television. Well, um, I don't disagree with what you're saying to the extent that, uh, let's face it, it's a, it's a telethon, for Christ's sake. Yeah, I mean, if, if it would have been a stand-up comedy routine, we wouldn't be having this conversation. But, you know, obviously it was the wrong setting. Um, and, you know, I don't condone the use of the word faggot in any situation, but who hasn't made a fag joke, you know, in this day and age. Well, I've never done it on the air. Well, that's true. That's the thing. You don't want to do that on the air. And even no. when I've done it, when, when I've done it, it's with when I'm with gay friends and they know where I'm coming from when I do it. Right. Right. Well, I mean, you know, we've got comedians today like Sarah Silverman and, and uh, you know, people who are, who are saying outrageous things, even more so than this, you know, slight misinterpreted statement from uh, Jerry Lewis. I think part of it also is the environment. I mean, this is a charity telethon. Exactly. I mean, you're not going to get people calling. You don't call people faggots on a charity telethon. No, absolutely not. But, you know, the guy made a mistake. He obviously knew he made a mistake as soon as he said it. And I think we need to realize that, you know, 
people make mistakes, even celebrities, especially when they're in their mid seventies, are going to have a you know an off moment from time to time. By the way, somebody wrote in and told me Jerry Lewis is eighty two. Is that right? Eighty two. Wow. Who knew? Well, I believe it. Maybe so. Anyway, thanks a lot for the call. Appreciate it. Our email address, Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.